What do the Ford 9-inch axle and Mike Tyson have in common? No matter how old they get, they both can take a beating and keep coming back for more. <laughs> this rear end is so tough, it probably scares the bolts holding it together, and it's been doing that since the 50s. Howdy folks, Ed here. Welcome back to Bullnose Garage. And while it's true that the Ford 9 inch is legendary for its strength, there's more to the story than just soaking up horsepower. Back in the day, racers were sneaking these bad boys into competition, bending rule books like pretzels just to get a leg up. Why? Well, because the Ford 9 inch rear end was like a secret weapon that gave him an edge on the track. And even now, Decades later, it's still the go-to choice for gearheads looking to put serious power to the pavement while keeping their options open. But it's all fun and games until someone snaps an axle and nothing is perfect. Yeah, I said it. Today we're taking a hard look at what makes the Ford 9-inch so revered among enthusiasts and how even the mighty Ford 9-inch has its trade-offs. So grab a seat while we shake the dust off the old shop manual and dig into every nut bolt and bearing until we know why this rear end practically has its own fan club. Hello. All right, so let's get into what makes the Ford 9-inch axle tick. When we say Ford 9-inch, we're talking about the ring gear diameter, a solid 9 inches of precision engineering. Back in the 50s, Ford engineers weren't just aiming for good enough. They wanted a rear end that outlasted the rest of the drivetrain, and they nailed it. Today, Ford 9-inch axle usually means the whole rear end assembly housing, third member, ring and pinion, and axle shafts. It's a fully integrated system that you can tweak, tune, and toughen to no end. What really sets the Ford 9-inch apart? It's ridiculously easy to wrench on. Thanks to its removable third member, you can yank the whole gear set out from the front without digging around in gear oil. That's a lifesaver for anyone dialing in their gear ratios. Whether you're setting up for highway cruising or shaving a tenth off your quarter mile, you can swap ratios in an afternoon, not in a weekend. But the Ford 9-inch axle isn't just about ease of maintenance. The design itself is inherently robust. Its lower pinion placement engages more teeth on the ring gear at once, spreading the load and reducing wear. A simple tweak, but with big results. Throw in a beefy housing, unmatched aftermarket support, and decades of refinements, and you've got a rear end that's just as comfortable behind a mild small block as it is handling high horsepower builds. Speaking of beefy housings, if you ever find yourself rummaging through a junkyard for that 9-inch, keep your eyes peeled for the casting marks on that center section. If you spot a big, bold N cast in there, that usually means it's a nodular iron case, the holy grail for folks running serious power. Those nodular N cases handle torque like nobody's business. We're talking about a stronger iron blend that resists cracking under high torque, like a steel-toed boot versus a flip-flop. Ford also made standard or war cases, which are still tough for most builds, but if you're hunting the best of the best, nodular, that's the watchword. Another thing, not all 9-inch housings are created equal. Some are big bearing and some are small bearing. You can't always slap big bearing axles on a small bearing housing, so it's worth checking whether your junkyard score is big or small bearing before you load up on fancy new parts. Big bearings handle heavier loads and higher speeds better, perfect for high horse builds or trucks that see a lot of abuse. Whether you're retrofitting a plastic Mustang or tackling a late model resto mod, the 9-inch is up for the job. And while we're on the subject of adaptability, let's keep in mind that it means the 9-inch came in all shapes and sizes over the decades. Four use it in everything, from 57 Rancheros to Broncos and F-Series trucks, and the distance between wheel mounting surfaces can vary a ton. If you're swapping a 9-inch into a classic Mustang or something else entirely, you don't always have to match the exact factory width. Going narrower can help tuck in big tires or achieve a certain stance, while going wider might fill out the fenders better. If you do decide to go off script with the width, just remember to measure your wheel offset or backspacing before you commit. 
Otherwise, you can end up with rubbing tires or that bulldog look where the wheels stick way out like a sore thumb. Although some folks around where I live think that looks really cool. Uh, but I'll let you be the judge. In any case, for a restoration, sure, you might want to keep a bow in stock. But for hot rodders or resto mod builders, a little fudging on the width is fair game. All right, so let's get back on track and spin the dial back to 1957 so we can get into how the Ford 9-inch made its mark. Introduced in 57, it debuted under full-size Ford cars like the Custom and Fairlane, delivering durability that was pretty impressive for the time. By the 60s, as Mustangs, Thunderbirds, and Galaxies hit the streets, packing some serious V8 heat, the 9-inch axle became the obvious choice. Racers caught on quick. Before long, you'd find the Ford 9-inch rear end in everything from drag strip warriors to circle track terrors. Why? Well, they could take big horsepower without grenading its internals like a pinata at a four-year-old's birthday party. By the late 60s, if you were building a serious track car or a dragster, there was a pretty good chance someone would just whisper, put a nine inch under there. Ford made waves by putting it in popular platforms like the Mustang. Now, not every first gen Mustang came with a nine inch from the factory. It depended on the engine and the options, but performance variants often did. And even if they didn't, a nine inch was pretty easy to swap in. Gearheads hoarded these axles, yanking them from junkyards, swapping it to other Fords, and even squeezing them into non-Ford builds. After all, horsepower doesn't care what badges on the grill when it's time to hold the line in the back. You know, I've come across more than a few stories while doing my research here. Whispers passed out in magazines, interviews, uh, and the pits after the dust settled about racers sneaking four nine inch rear ends under their machines they had no business being in. Chevy, Mopar, didn't make a difference. With a careful grind here and a splash of paint there, they'd sneak right past the rule book to tap into the nine inches strength and reliability. These weren't loyalists looking to wave the blue oval banner. They were competitors who knew a performance edge when they saw one. That kind of sneaky dedication says it all. The nine inch was like a backstage pass. Everyone wanted it, but not everyone was supposed to have it. By the way, if you're sneaking a nine inch under your build, make sure you pay close attention to the axle shaft hardening. Some older nine inch axles, often the earlier 31 spline shaft units, are uh, through hardened, making the metals uniformly hardened from end to end. These can be safely shortened and re-splined without splicing into a soft zone. But many later axles, especially post 72, are only induction hardened around the splines. Uh, chop those and you'll be cutting into metal that's not heat treated for high stress, which is a recipe for a catastrophic failure. So don't just fire up the angle grinder without knowing what kind of metal mojos at work. In general, 31 spline axles prior to 72 can be shortened. But because Ford's manufacturing methods varied over time and sometimes even mid-year, uh, the safest bet is to verify exactly how each axle is hardened. Also, if the axle is tapered, it's generally off limits for shortening. If you want to keep it simple and have the cash, you can just go to aftermarket and forget all the messy shortening business altogether and skip the guesswork. All right, let's talk about what makes this rear end tick. A stock Ford 9-inch axle typically came with either 28 spline or 31 spline axles. Spline count refers to how the axles connected to the differential. More splines typically mean stronger axles. In most factory V8 setups, 28 spline axles got the job done. But on heavier hitters like the Boss 302 or the 428 Cobra Jet, you might find 31 spline axles lurking back there. For serious power, think drag racing with a blown Windsor or a torque happy 460, you want to upgrade to 31 spline shafts or even aftermarket 35 spline options. Thankfully, the aftermarket delivers every spline count and alloy you could dream of. As for Ford 9 inch gear ratios, well, that's where the fun begins. You can run something mild, like 30 to 1 or 325 to 1 for long highway cruises and let your engine loaf along at speed without screaming. On the other hand, if you're dropping a hammer at the track or looking for killer acceleration off the line, step up to something in the 4.0 to 1 and above range. Yeah, your fuel economy will take a hit, but when you're chasing faster ETs, who's counting miles per gallon anyway? The best part is that changing gears in a Ford 9-inch rear end is about as painless as it gets. Just pop the third member out, swap in a new set, and you're good to go. No fumbling around inside a cramped housing. Over the years, the Ford 9-inch axle found itself under a wide variety of Ford vehicles, from certain configurations of the 57 Ford Custom and Ranchero, to Mustangs, Fairlanes, Galaxies, and later Broncos and F-Series trucks, the 9-inch got around. Even Mercury's and Lincoln's got in on the action. If you want to nerd out a little, 
Check the chart I'll pop up here on the screen that lists a bunch of the different vehicles and the axle widths they came with. This is perfect if you're hunting for a junkyard 9 inch and don't want to guess which housing might work best for your ride, but always measure for yourself because Ford was known to change specs mid-year. If you're looking for an exact fit or dealing with tight tolerances, you'll still have to measure in person to be absolutely sure. Think of this chart as 99% uh, correct for most cases, with enough weird exceptions out there that it's worth breaking out the tape measure every single time. The 9-inch was as much a part of Ford's performance DNA as the small blocks and big blocks bolted in front of it. Think about the golden age of Ford performance, and odds are, a trusty 9-inch was quietly holding it all together in the background. Ford's early muscle trucks and SUVs thrived on its strength, and off-roaders have relied on its durability for decades. But let's be real, nothing's perfect. While the Ford 9-inch is legendary for toughness, it's not without its quirks. One common knock is that it can sap a bit more horsepower than, say, a more modern design. The culprit here is the pinion angle and how the gears mesh. The 9-inch has a, a deeper pinion offset with a third bearing supporting it. It's like giving the pinion gear its own personal security detail. Extra bearings equals extra stability, but it also costs you a smidge of efficiency. Another thing to consider, if you score a vintage 9-inch at a salvage yard, it's probably due for a rebuild. Bearings, seals, and gears don't last forever, and given the age of some of these axles, you might be buying a project instead of a plug-and-play solution. That said, parts are everywhere, and the simplicity of the design makes it very approachable for a rebuild. When it comes to maintenance, the 9-inch keeps things pretty simple. Fresh gear oil, clean wear patterns, and uh, healthy bearings and seals, eh, that's all it takes to keep the 9-inch happy. For high torque or horsepower setups, you probably want to step up to stronger shafts and a nodular iron third member. It's a beefed up aftermarket version of the stock center section. And if you're restoring a classic Ford and you want to keep it period correct, a stock 9-inch axle might be enough. But if you're building a resto mod or a serious race car, don't hesitate to step up to high performance parts. Because the aftermarket offers everything from modern limited slip differentials and lockers to advanced torque biasing setups that send power where it's needed most. Comparing the Ford 9-inch rear end to other axles in the Ford family tree brings up some interesting points. For instance, the 8-inch axle was decent for mild streetcars, but it lacked the raw strength of the 9-inch. The Ford 8.8, .8, introduced later, is a solid and lighter option with decent aftermarket support. However, it's harder to swap gears in and is often seen as less durable under serious power. So, the 9-inch remains the gold standard for Ford rear ends. And that's not just nostalgia talking. It's easy to swap gear ratios, unmatched aftermarket support, and decades of proven durability still set it apart from the pack. Of course, if you're a Chevy or Mopar guy, you might be shouting, what about the 12 bolt or the eight and three quarters? Uh, they're no slouches. I mean, the Mopar eight and three quarters even uses a dropout center just like the nine inch. And the Chevy 12 bolt has loyal fans who will swear it's just as strong with slightly less power loss. But what makes the 9-inch special is its insane aftermarket and that bulletproof third bearing pinion support. The Ford 9-inch axle is an ideal upgrade for your classic Mustang project or a modern resto mod. I've said that before. If you've got a Fox body Mustang, a Crown Vic front end swapped F100 or F150, the 9-inch can tie your build together nicely. It's not always a direct bolt-in. You might need to narrow the housing, move spring perches, or order a custom width unit for your setup. Once it's installed, though, the 9-inch becomes the ultimate rear-end playground. Whether it's swap gear ratios, adding a limited slip differential, or upgrading to rear disc brakes, it's all about grabbing parts off the shelf and turning wrenches, not reinventing the wheel. I mean, I know I sound like a broken record, but when it comes to aftermarket support, the Ford 9-inch stands in a league of its own. The term here might be global phenomenon. You could pick up brand new housings that mimic the originals or go all in with fabricated designs that look ripped straight out of NASCAR. You can literally put together the parts for a 9-inch build from scratch in your underwear while eating Cheetos and staring at the Jags or Summit Racing logo. Axle shafts? Choose from hardened steel alloys, beefier spline counts, and custom links tailored to your build. Differentials? Everything's on the table, from vintage-style limited slips to modern lockers and torque-sensing units that were pure sci-fi in the 9 inches' heyday. The 9 inches' iconic status means the company's never stopped innovating. They've pushed the design and materials far beyond 
what Ford's original engineers could have imagined back in the Eisenhower era. Of course, just because you can throw every part in the catalog at your axle doesn't mean you should. You know, the real beauty of the Ford 9 inches is flexibility. It could be as simple or as tricked out as you want. Yep. If you're rocking a mildly warmed over 302 or 51 Windsor, a stock 9 inch with a refreshed limited slip might be all you need. If you're cranking out some serious horsepower with a big block or a stroke or small block, it's there to the upgraded components. The real beauty is choice. You're not locked into one ratio or spline count. You won't be stuck hunting for rare parts. It's all right at your fingertips, which is why the 9 inch remains just as relevant today as it was decades ago. I mean, the 9 inch is more than just metal. It's a piece of heritage. It's a nod to an era when Detroit churned out parts built to last. Racers bent the rules to use it, gearheads embraced it, and modern builders still rely on it. Sure, it's got some imperfections, a bit more parasitic loss, the occasional rebuild, maybe some extra weight compared to newer designs, but in return, you get a proven track record and limitless tuning potential. And that, that's the secret sauce, my friends. The Ford 9-inch rear end earned its stripes the hard way on the track, in the garage, and under the wrench. That is why, even now, when you think of building a classic Ford or stuffing something monstrous under that old chassis in your garage, the Ford 9-inch is the first thing that comes to mind. It's a piece of history, a symbol of strength, and the ultimate guardian of your precious horsepower. And all that said, you know, going into my own build, I figured the 8.8 .8 was more than up to the task. My plan was simple. Throw in some chromoly axles, lock in a solid gear ratio, and call it good for my 408 stroker build. But man, after digging deeper into the Ford 9-inch axle, I'm starting to rethink that. I mean, the 8.8's got plenty going for it. It's lighter, it's cheaper, doesn't need a total rework. On the other hand, the 9-inch is that, that bulletproof insurance policy that I've been talking about. Get easy gear swaps, legendary amputation, and massive aftermarket support. I mean, now, while 450 horses, which is my target, doesn't necessarily demand it, a 9-inch would give me peace of mind. You know, whether I want to crank up the power later or just want to surprise somebody at a stoplight. Now, I'm in a classic builder's dilemma. Stick with the tried and true 8.8, .8, beef it up and save some cash, or go all in on a 9-inch and never look back. I mean, seriously, guys, what do you think? Should I stick with the upgraded 8.8 .8 or take the leap to the big league 9 inch? I mean, let me know because honestly, I'm still on the fats. Uh, put your opinion in the comments. And as usual, if you learned something today, I really appreciate that like and subscribe. It really does help me out. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, gripes, internet ramblings, if I got something wrong, drop it in the comments and let me know. And as always, Thanks again so much for watching, guys. We will see you next time. She's rough around the edges, but she's doing fine. Tinkering away, getting things to shine. That old nose garage, she's considered divine. Thanks again for watching. We will see you next time.